Hey everyone. So yeah, hope you guys are doing fine. So as we know that the international break is now over, and uh, so I, I wanted to talk about uh, my team and how I'm gonna approach the upcoming games. Right? Uh, there are not a lot of games left. Maybe about six, seven, eight uh, game weeks left now. And uh, yeah, so we have this uh, blank game week coming up in game week 33, right? And there might be some fixture changes, right? Uh, we we do not know that for now, for sure, right? It's not nothing has been confirmed, but uh, according to what I know as of now, uh, I'm recording this. So yeah, uh, I'd want to talk about Man City players, Spurs players, and Ashton Villa, and all the double game weeks coming up, all the blank game weeks coming up, coming up, and uh, yeah, and I also have wild card left, right? So if you are one of those uh, managers who has a uh, wild card left too, yeah, you might want to stick around. Uh, my plan is to use it on maybe on game week 31. Uh, and why I, I'll let you guys know why I'm not using this game week, right? So yeah, uh, let's begin. Now, uh, you could easily use the wild card uh, in this game week, right? In game week 30. But uh, one of the reasons I'm not using that is because uh, I have three Spurs players, right? And two of them are injured. Now, Regulon is injured, Son is injured. Now, according to what I've read, uh, they might be back this game week, right? Uh, they might be here and they might play this game week. And another thing is about the double game week. So I still don't have enough information about when the double game weeks are going to be scheduled. So if I wait for one more game week, maybe, maybe I'll get the information, right? So those are one of few of the reasons why I don't want to be rushing in the wild card. Maybe if you could wait for game week 32 also, I wouldn't say that's the worst idea. You could use it in game week 32 also. So I personally am waiting for gaming 31 because after gaming 31, there are some teams that have very good fixtures coming up like Wolves and all these are uh, Chelsea and all these sites and uh, fixtures of uh, teams like, uh, you know, Leeds. I have three Leeds players and their fixture get very bad after uh, this game week. So they have good uh, game against Sheffield this week. But after that, they face uh, Man City, Man United and Liverpool. I think those three teams in a row. So I, I felt like it's about time to get rid of Leeds also. We'll talk about that in detail also. So. Firstly, I'm pretty sure a lot of us have uh, Man City and Spurs players in bundle. You know, I mean, I personally have two uh, Man City players. I have De Bruyne and uh, Gundogan, right? I got rid of Cancelo uh, knowing that I had to. I mean, I had to get rid of uh, Man City player for Regulon because uh, Regulon had double gaming, right? So, yeah, uh, if you are one of those managers who has a lot of Man City and Spurs players, now, for me... I think it's about time we start getting rid of Man City uh, players because of a lot of reasons, you know. One is being rotation, right? And they might be, uh, they will, they will definitely blank in game week 33. So they won't be blank blanking in game week uh, 32, according to Ben Krellin, right? Uh, so there will be regular games in game week 32, although they are, it's not shown in the uh, tie sheet right now. Uh, the games are still to be uh, rescheduled, but still, uh, they they won't be blanking in gaming 32. They will be blanking in gaming 33. That's what I read as of now, right? If something changes, uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, updated, I guess. So, yeah. As I, as I said, there's a lot of uh, reason to uh, you know uh, start reducing Man City players in your team. One is of course rotation, and now they are in Champions League. They are uh, they're gonna play against Chelsea in FA Cup uh, in after this game week, I guess, right? So there are definitely gonna be a lot of rotations there. So, and also they don't have any double game week coming up. So it feels like it's just natural to get rid of, uh, start not having uh, three Man City players. Like as good as Man City has been, I think for this upcoming three, I mean up, upcoming last eight, nine games, right? I think you should target good fixtures uh, and players in good form. So I feel like if you don't have, you know, big names, big Man City players for at least upcoming days, I think you will be just fine because like there's, it's just so difficult to know who is going to play and who is not going to play for Man City. It's just not taking a chance. I I feel like that. Looking at their price ranges, you know, if you look at defenders, I'm pretty sure you'll go for uh, Cancelo and Diaz. They are 6 million players. If you go for the midfielders, you'll definitely go for De Bruyne, Sterling, these kind of players. They are very expensive. So if they don't play, it just looks like a waste of money. So I personally might uh, start reducing the Man City numbers in my team. Uh, I've already removed Cancelo from my team. So I still have De Bruyne and Gundogan. Uh, so let's see what happens. I can still wait one more game week to see which Man City players I want to get rid of. And next week, I'll dis uh, decide about which uh, Man City will be out of my team. So and another thing is Spurs. Now, as a Spurs, I intentionally actually brought three uh, Spurs players because as we know, there was a big blank game week uh, before the international break. So and uh, it looked like bringing in Ashton Villa and uh, Spurs players was kind of logical thing to do because they had good fixtures and they have good players and that is one of the reason i bought regulon keen and son in my team now 
The thing is, they still have one more doll game week left. I don't know when. It's not been announced or anything. But they still have a uh, doll game week left. And that is one of the reasons I bought three uh, Spurs players. And according to what I've read uh, about Regulon and Sun, they might just feature this game week. So that's what I've read. I think it's pretty po positive news about them. I did not read anything about Doherty. I don't know if he's going to play or anything. But about Regulon and Sun, it, it kind of looked like a positive news to me. So now if they do play, I have no problem with them, right? I still hold on to them uh, for the double game week. But my concern is game week 33. Now in game week 33, uh, Spurs don't play at all, right? That is one of the things that I worry about. Man City Spurs, like I have a lot of player, like half of the team uh, of mine is uh, filled with Man City and Spurs players and they both don't play in game week 33. Now that is one thing I'll have to keep in mind when I use my wildcard in game week 31. In this situation, uh, the if there's the news about the double gaming of Spurs, I think that's better. If the news comes faster enough, right? Uh, I think that's the best thing for us because uh, it will be easier to see when to use our uh, wildcard and when to uh, triple up on the Spurs players for the double gaming, right? And there are other teams also with the double gaming like uh, Everton. I kind of want uh, Calvert Lewin from there or Richardson. I don't know yet, but and other the team with double gaming is Ashton Villa that you might want to target, right? So I also have three Ashton Villa players. I also want to talk about the Ashton Villa. Now let's uh, stop talking about Man City and Spurs and about Ashton Villa. They don't have the best fixers, right? But again, they have double gaming coming up and they also have very good game against. Uh, West Brom in game week 33. So I don't think having Ashton Villa player until game week 33 is that bad of an idea. Yes, the fixtures are not the best, right? But if you have uh, three uh, Ashton Villa players and you don't have wildcard, I think until game week 33, I can hold on to them. And I personally, having wildcard, I kind of want to get rid of Martinez looking at the fixture. Now I could bring in, I don't know, players from uh, like Leicester. They also have very good fixtures. And I could bring in players from like Mendy, you know, from Chelsea goalkeeper. I could do that. I could play around. I could bring Patricio. I, I looked at the Wolves fixtures, right? Wolves fixtures also don't look that bad. So I could play around with that. But my thinking about Martinez is now I have a player who has a double gimmick left. So do I want to get rid of him? That is one of the things I'm thinking about Martinez. Now, looking at the fixture, I think removing Martinez is a very logical option after this gimmick, right? So... But looking at his double game week, I think I could still hold on to him. I just don't know yet. I have not decided. So I have uh, Martinez, Watkins and Konsa in my side. For this game week, it's fine. Uh, but after this game week, I'll have to think using my wild card. So that is another concern for me. The Aston Villa players. They don't have the best fixtures. But they have a double game week coming up. And still, they have very good game in game week 33. So yeah. I, I'll just have to wait and see what to do with the Aston Villa players too. Now, moving on to the Leeds players. Now, they have been a very, very good servant for the uh, FPL managers, you know, this season, like very cheap, very quality players. And now the only thing about the uh, Leeds players is that now we triple up on them because of the blank game week, like most of us did, right? So I personally think removing Dallas and Rafina wouldn't be the worst idea after this game week. For this game week, I think it's pretty fine playing against Sheffield, right? Potential uh, clean sheet, potential goals for Bamford. I'm just going to leave him there. Now, one thing. I'm thinking about is maybe when I, when I use my wild card, I could remove all three players from the Leeds uh, side. You know, I could remove Dallas, Shafina, and Bamford because the, like the fixtures are not good at all, at all. I just don't like the fixtures after this game week for the Leeds side. Like they face Man City, Liverpool, and Man United like consecutively. So I just don't like that at all. Like it's Leeds, you know. Like they can they can perform, they can outperform big side. We have we have seen that uh, in the beginning of the season, but uh, now looking at the end of the season, they just don't look like the same team you know they they are very inconsistent i've said this throughout the season these are super inconsistent but like i wouldn't be uh, surprised if bamford scores a hat trick against man united or man city I, they are just that kind of team you know so if you want to keep bamford i think it's fine but if you have dallas and rafina and you want to remove them i don't think you need to think twice right after this game week but if you want to keep bamford i personally might just keep bamford or remove bamford for uh the Calvert Lewin or Rich Allison. Uh, that does kind of look like a very uh, logical choice to me, uh, considering that Everton has double game week left and Everton's fixture are not as bad as of Leeds. So that's my thinking right now. I, I, would, I will probably remove Rafinha and Dallas from my wildcard team when I uh, create a wildcard team. And about Bamford, I'll have to think. Let's see what happens. But if I remove Bamford, I think it will probably for, be, be uh, for uh, Calvert Lewin or Rich Allison. It just feels like that. I'm not decided yet. But yeah, that is my take on the Leeds players. Now, 
Uh, talking about Wolves, now we have had this a lot of talk about Wolves players and now having very good fixtures, right, in upcoming games. The fixtures are not that bad at all. And uh, now Wolves have not been that impressive of a side this season, not as impressive as they were last season, right? They have been kind of struggling to score and also make, keeping clean sheet. Like they have just been, they don't concede a lot, they don't score a lot, but still, uh, they are not the most impressive side uh, this season, right? I, I had big, big expectations from them considering that they were not in Europe this season. So I felt like they could concentrate all their energy and, you know, players uh, for the uh, Premier League this season. But still, we have not seen that kind of uh, result from them. But still, after Game Week 30, they faced Fulham, Sheffield, Burnley and West Brom and Brighton. So until Game Week 35, the fixtures are too good to ignore. I feel like maybe I'll get one of the defenders, right? And I've also heard that Raul Jimenez is training now. Now, I don't know when he's going to start playing or anything, but what I, according to what I've read, Raul Jimenez is back and he's training. So, I think that's very good news for the for Wolves fans and us uh, FPL managers. But now, I want to talk about is Now, my rank is around 200,000 or something, right? Uh, that's my rank. So, I'm not going anywhere with that rank. So, I could take punts and you, you personally can, if you want to, right? There's not a lot of game weeks left. If you want to take punts, you can do it. Like, as long as you get your captainship, right? I don't think taking punts on players like Neto or, I don't know, Neves or Havers, this kind of players, it might just work out. It might just work out. You could do that. So, I personally might do that. Uh, but for me, if I'm going for Wolves players, I think it should be defenders. Now, I don't know when uh, Jimenez is going to buy back. If there's any attacker, I think it should be Neto from Wolves. So, yeah, in my wildcard, I'm definitely going to uh, like have at least one Wolves player. Uh, probably a defender, maybe even Patricio. I, I could just bring in keeper also. I just don't know yet. So as I said, uh, this is what I have uh, planned as of now, you know, take some differential players, but get my captainship right. Uh, as long as I get my captainship right, I think I'll be just fine. Okay, now, so this is what my team looks like right now. So I, I, I guess I have kind of talked about all the teams and players that I have in my team. And I'm pretty sure you can uh, relate it to you. I'm pretty sure you all of you have a Man City players, Spurs players, Aston Villa players and Leeds players. I, I'm pretty sure you have a lot of them. And I hope I've helped you make up your mind about what to do with those players in upcoming days, right? Now, as I said, for this game week, I could bring in a Chelsea defender. I could, but still, my team kind of looks fine. Like, if I have to re remove a defender from this uh, team for this week, I think it should be Cresswell. But again, Cresswell has been my hero for this season. You know, the, one of the best pick I've ever done this season. I've had, had him for so long. Like, I've kind of been... Now, I have uh, em emotional attachment with that guy, you know, with Cresswell. So... As long as he's fit, as long as he's playing, I'm not removing him from my team this entire season. He's a season-long option for me now. He takes all the set pieces. He plays every game 90 minutes. So, uh, Cresswell is always going to be there no matter the fixture. As long as he's fit, he will be there. So, maybe I could remove Regulon for Aspi or Rudiger. I can't remove Dallas. He got very good fixture. So, one of the things I could do is bring a Chelsea defender. If there's any news about Son not playing or Regulon not playing, if I get any that kind of news, I could play around with Weltman or Konsa to get in uh, one of the Chelsea defenders, right? Except for that, I don't think I need to make a lot of changes. So, now, yeah, this might be my first 11. Now, I could play around with Gundogan for Son or I could do something like that. If uh, there's some negative news comes about uh, Regulon or Son, right? But for now, I think I'm pretty much fine. Uh, this will be my team. Now, talking about captain. Now, my, my captain won't be Dallas, right? I captained Dallas uh, last time because I was taking a lot of punts and, uh, you know, I, I was just playing around. So, now, it's a serious business. I, I, what I'm trying to do is, I'll bring some uh, punty players, the differential players, right? But still, when I'm captaining players, I'll be captaining very safe choices. Now, if there are no safe choices, you can play around with captain, you know? Sometimes, there are just no captain picks, you know? In that kind of uh, situation, I think it's fine to play around with the uh, captainship and play, uh, like captain players like Dallas and Cresswell and all these players. But you, when you have players like Bamford, who has game against Sheffield, Keane against Newcastle, Fernandez against Brighton, right? I think it would be stupid to captain players like Dallas and these kind of players. Uh, if there was no, uh, you know, specific captain choice, uh, then I think captaining these kind of differential players wouldn't be a problem. But since you already have Fernandez, Keane, Bamford, who all are on penalties and set pieces, and playing against very easy team, so I feel like my captain will be one of the one of these three. It looks like uh, Kane to me for now, right? I'm not decided yet. It will be Kane. I'll post my final team in the Instagram account, but I I'm pretty sure my final team will be this, and my captain will be Kane. So yeah, 
for next week, I will be uh, coming out with the wildcard video, right? Uh, for this week, I'm pretty sure this will be my first 11. Uh, if something changes, I'll let you guys know in the Instagram account. My captain will be Kane, not Dallas. Uh, it's a mistake. Uh, it will be Kane. So just, yeah, that is all I have to say. If I make any transfers, I'll let you guys know. But this is it. My captain Kane. This is my first 11. If I bring a defender, it will be Chelsea defender. Except for that, there's not much I've thought about. About the wild card. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, for now, uh, take care. Uh, Bye-bye.